The landscape we now call Addison was once filled with tall grass prairie, included several large tree groves, and was traversed by Salt Creek. During the time of European exploration, the land was home to the Potawatomi tribe. The Potawatomi were a semi-nomadic people who hunted herds of buffalo, deer, and elk. In the summer months, they formed camps along waterways, and the women planted small fields of corn, oats, and pumpkin, and gathered nuts, roots, and berries. The Potawatomi were forced to move west of the Mississippi River by the U.S. government as a result of the Black Hawk War of 1832. This opened the area for settlers from the East Coast and abroad. In 1833, Hezekiah Dunkley and Mason Smith staked their claims in a grove along the east bank of Salt Creek between where Irving Park Road intersects Wooddale Road today. The next spring, Bernard Kohler and his family traveled from Hanover, Germany to settle in what became known as Dunkley's Grove. These early settlers had to farm and hunt to survive on the harsh prairie. By 1842, the area had become known as Addison. By mid-19th century, there was a large influx of German immigration to the area, and the population supported a local steam mill to process grain, a general store, a cobbler shop, a blacksmith, and a cheese factory. Most of these German immigrants were farmers and grew crops and raised livestock. Some specialized in dairy cows and sold milk while others operated nurseries, growing trees, bushes, and plants. In 1849, the first German Lutheran school was built in Addison and was followed by the first public or English school in 1858. For a time, students from the Lutheran school attended the English school for half days to learn English and American history. Over 60 young men from Addison Township volunteered to serve with the 105th Illinois Volunteer Infantry Regiment during the Civil War. The 105th served mainly as a garrison unit from 1862 to 1864. The regiment engaged in active fighting during General Sherman's Atlanta campaign and the Campaign of the Carolinas. 51 members of the regiment died in action. In 1867, Christian Heidemann began operation of his wind-powered grist mill on his farm north of Lake Street and east of Mill Road. The mill was busy grinding grain into flour for area farmers until the early 1900s. Meanwhile, the Lutheran community was busy setting up local institutions, like the Teachers Seminary, to train male Lutheran school teachers, and the Orphan Home to raise, train, and educate orphans, half orphans, and other children entrusted to its care. Orphans remained in the home until they were confirmed at age 14, and then were placed with Lutheran families in the area and taught farming, housework, and various trades. An annual outdoor festival with music, sports, games, contests, and tours was held and attracted support from thousands of German Lutherans throughout the Midwest. A referendum was held in September 1884 on whether or not Addison should incorporate. It passed by a vote of 28 to 3. On October 6, 1884, the village of Addison was officially incorporated. The first village president was Henry Buchholz, and the first village marshal was also appointed at this time. In 1890, a group of local businessmen formed the Addison Railroad Company and entered into an agreement with the Illinois Central Railroad to provide and maintain a spur line adjacent to Addison Road from North Avenue to just north of Lake Street. 
Addison residents, the Orphan Association, and local congregations raised the funds needed for the project. By the early 1900s, Addison had an established business corner at the northeast corner of Lake Street and Addison Road. This was the location of the Marquardt General Store and a meat market. The Marquardt Store also functioned as the village post office from 1905 to 1934. In 1922, Lake Street was paved. Automobile garages and car dealerships sprung up along Lake Street to service locals and those just passing through along Federal Highway US Route 20. In 1925, a new modern two-story brick building was built on the site of the former Teachers Seminary buildings. The Chicago City Mission Society had purchased the property to house children referred by the juvenile courts and to provide moral, mental, and physical development. Called the Kinderheim, the school was formerly known as the Addison Manual Training School for Boys and the Industrial School for Girls. Martin Eggerding served as Addison Village President from 1927 to 1952. During his tenure, Addison experienced unprecedented growth. He was elected in part due to his promises to improve the village water and sewer systems. He also encouraged local rezoning to allow clean industry to come to Addison, which paved the way for the large industrial area Addison has today. During his administration, Egerding promoted and oversaw public improvements in waterworks, sewage, paving, and fire protection. 86 Addison residents served in the Second World War. Three men with Addison ties were killed in action. Three others were taken prisoner by the Germans. Following the war, the Veterans of Foreign Wars No. 7446 post was formed to assist those returning from service and to visit hospitalized veterans. The post is located on West Lake Street near Caputo's Fresh Market and still serves Addison's veteran community. Through the war years, Addison remained mostly a farming town with some light industry and the population hovered around 800 people, including the orphanage and Kinderheim residents. After the war ended and servicemen returned home, a national housing shortage developed. Land values rose, and many local farmers decided to cash in by selling their land to home developers. These construction companies began to build subdivisions in Addison, consisting of modest homes. A three-bedroom brick exterior ranch home in the Normandy Manor subdivision sold in 1955 for $15,950. And in three years, A.P. Ross Construction sold 395 homes with FHA and VA financing. In the 1950s and 60s, political tensions with the Soviet Union led the U.S. government to operate a Nike missile base in Addison as part of a Chicago area anti-aircraft defense network. The site included a 6.9 acre radar center a block north of Fullerton Avenue and east of Route 53, and a larger 22.6 acre launching area south of Fullerton Avenue off Lombard Road. By the early 1970s, when the threat of attack had gone, the Nike missiles were deactivated and removed, and the base served as an Army Reserve Training Center before being deemed excess property and sold in the early 1980s. Today, the radar site is part of Nike Park, and the missile launch area has been replaced by the Addison Consolidated Dispatch Center. As residential construction continued and population continued to increase, a need for more village services emerged. Between 1957 and 1972, Addison School District 4 built eight elementary schools and a junior high school. St. Joseph Catholic Church and St. Philip the Apostle Church opened grade schools. 
DuPage High School District 88 built Addison Trail High School, and the Diocese of Joliet opened Driscoll Catholic High School. In 1958, developer Anthony Lulo opened Addison's first shopping center, Green Meadow, on Lake Street just west of Addison Road to provide convenient local shopping for his nearby Green Meadow Estates subdivision. In 1967, developer A.P. Ross opened another shopping center on Army Trail Boulevard west of Mill Road. Army Trail Shopping Plaza was to be comprised of 100,000 square feet of retail space and parking for 1,000 cars on 13 acres. Initial tenants were the Addison Township Savings and Loan Association, two retail food stores, and a medical center. In 1960, the village purchased the Kinderheim building from the Lutheran Child and Welfare Society for use as Village Hall. The Village Hall not only housed village offices, but also Addison's first public library from 1962 to 1968. In 1968, a new library building was constructed near Village Hall at what is now 2 Friendship Plaza and the headquarters of DuPage High School District 88. In 1961, the Adventureland Amusement Park opened. Located just off Lake Street at Medina Road, the park used Addison as its address for marketing purposes. Thrilling rides, dance bands, and its one admission price for all rides policy drew suburbanites from all over Northern Illinois. After Riverview Park closed in 1967, Adventureland was the state's largest amusement park. In 1976, Great America opened and soon led to the closure of Adventureland in 1977. In 1964, Addison residents approved a referendum to create a village recreation program to maintain the village's 13 parks and hire a full-time parks and recreation director. In 1969, the Addison Park District was formed as an independent taxing body following a successful referendum. The district office was first housed in Village Hall. The new park district soon purchased 50 acres of land behind Oak Elementary School and built its first recreational center, Community Park, by the mid-70s. Throughout its history, Addison has had to combat periodic flooding due to Salt Creek. As Addison's population quadrupled from 1960 to 1970, and both residential and industrial development reduced collection areas for runoff water, the threat of flooding only worsened. Addison experienced a devastating flood in late August 1972, when up to seven inches fell in an eight-hour period. This event was followed 15 years later by what has been called the storm of the century, when 13 inches of rain fell on the area from August 13th to 15th, 1987. This catastrophic flood led to federal buyouts of homes and businesses like Louis Restaurant, an Addison landmark since 1918, and led to $30 million in infrastructure improvements to mitigate flooding, including the creation of Louis Reservoir to provide flood detention. In the early to mid-1990s, the village created two tax increment financing, or TIF districts, to pay for improvements at the Army Trail Plaza Shopping Center and Green Oaks Court Apartment Complex, and the Michael Lane area of Addison. In 1995, Addison was sued by the U.S. Department of Justice, alleging that the village had used its TIF district powers to unfairly remove minority residents from their homes. The dispute ended in 1997 with a settlement agreement and consent decree that stipulated no admission of wrongdoing by the village and permitted future development of these areas. Before any redevelopment of the Michael Lane neighborhood could proceed, however, the village had to develop a new public park and acquire a building for use as a community center. Beginning in the early 1990s with the development of the Lake Street Shopping Center at Lake Street and Rolling Road near the new I-355 Tollway and continuing on through the decade with redevelopment of Centennial Plaza, Addison's business district has steadily moved westward. 
This development led Dave & Buster's, a national company which combines the dining experience with arcade games, to open a facility on Swift Road in 1995. In 1996, the Marcus Corporation opened a 20-screen cinema as part of the Centennial Plaza upgrade, and in 1999 added a large mega-screen IMAX theater. These commercial developments spurred even more new restaurants and businesses to relocate to Addison. In the late 1990s through the early 2000s, the village saw many upgrades to its own facilities. In 1998, a new public works garage was built on the former Nike Base property. In 1999, a museum campus on Army Trail Boulevard was created when the William Balzer House and Coach House were relocated from Lake Street to an empty lot next door to the Century House, a former Lutheran school teacher's home, and in 2000, the current Village Hall opened to the public. In 2007, the Henry Hyde Resource Center, the successor to the Michael Lane Community Center, opened and was followed the next year by the opening of the current Addison Public Library. In 2010, the Addison Center for the Arts found a permanent home at Addison Trail High School for its gallery, offices, and performance space. From 2002 to 2005, Addison also saw the establishment of the Pampered Chef Corporate Headquarters, the arrival of mega retailer Walmart, and the relocation of the Medina Shrine Fraternal Organization. The public sector also saw the refurbishment of Fire Station 1, the creation of the Addison Early Learning Center, and the opening of the state-of-the-art Addison Consolidated Dispatch Center during a period from 2014 to 2018. In the last decade, residential development in Addison has experienced tremendous growth. The enclave at Mill Creek is comprised of single-story homes designed for the empty nester, planned in two phases with an adjoining townhouse development. A smaller development, Woodland Estates, features one-story townhomes at Route 53 and Woodland Court. Addison's first senior living community, Clarendale of Addison, opened adjacent to the Marcus Theatres and offers seniors a resort-style community with access to a continuum of care, from independent living to assisted living or memory care on a rental basis. The former Driscoll Catholic High School property is now developed as The Highlands, a subdivision of four to five bedroom upscale single family homes. The COVID-19 pandemic changed the way the village provided services to its community. The village offered new contactless ways for residents to conduct village business, shared helpful information on Addison Community Television, and distributed COVID-19 preparedness kits to residents and organized village-wide vaccination events. In 2021, the village was named one of five national recipients of the prestigious Robert Wood Johnson Culture of Health Prize in recognition of its work advancing health, opportunity, and equity for all. Today, there is a robust village special events schedule, which starts on Memorial Day, and continues through the summer with the weekly Rock and Wheels concert series and the annual Medina Shriners Parade. Resumes in the fall with the Mayor's Community Charity Ball and Veterans Day observance and culminates with the Christmas tree lighting and parades. Known as the Village of Friendship, Addison has many advantages as a place to live, work, and grow.